Thank you for your patience, everyone. Welcome to day 10 of the Outshine LGBT Film Festival. This is our 22nd film festival and our first virtual festival. So my name is Ebony Rhodes. I am the board secretary for Outshine. And I'm so excited to jump into our Trans Spotlight Q&A watch party tonight. We have a full house of filmmakers and talent from our film, Valentina. Before we go on, I would like to introduce my co-host for tonight's talk, uh, fellow board member, Dino Mosquera. Dino, are you there? Hey, how are you? Good, it's good to, good to be here with you tonight. All right, so like I said, we have a great conversation uh, with our talent tonight with Valentina, but before we get started, we also have three really awesome community partners uh, with us this evening to share the great work that they do in South Florida. First up, we have Ariana Center. We have a video uh, that's gonna showcase their work. Uh, Ariana Center engages and empowers and lifts up the trans community of South Florida while placing a special emphasis on those in the trans community who are most marginalized. For us, by us. Ariana Center is the only direct service and advocacy organization based in South Florida, led by a trans Latina openly living with HIV. With a mission to uplift and support transgender women of color in Florida, Puerto Rico, and beyond. We provide free mobile HIV testing and match clients to care and prevention, case management to help with name changes, referrals for legal support, and provide overall linkage to medical and mental health care. We also provide emergency safe housing for trans women in distress and those released from incarceration and ICE detention. We provide scholarships for GED and technical school as well as coaching to help trans women enter the workforce. On the advocacy front, we train trans women of color and LGBTQ people to become activists and help educate elected leaders at all levels of government on issues and policies that are vital to the lives of people of trans experience. Ariana Center, empoderando a nuestra comunidad transgénero. All right. It's a great video. So next, our next community partner is Yes Institute. Um, we have Joseph Zolubchuk, the executive director, here to say a few words about Yes Institute. Uh, their mission is to prevent suicide and ensure the healthy development of all youth through powerful communication and education on gender and orientation. I think before we hear from Joseph, let's let's see uh, the, the video. first experience with Yes was over two years ago with my then five-year-old little boy, whom I have now found out you identify as gender non-conforming, gender non-binary, gender fluid. Um, but at the time, I only knew him as my fabulous little boy that liked to wear tutus and paint his nails and show up in a very non-conforming, unconventional way as a little boy. Um, he'd started to experience bullying at school, in kindergarten, unfortunately, and that galvanized me to go and get educated on this subject as his mother. How was I going to raise him and allow him to be his authentic self and educate myself on the subject, which, which is what brought me to yes. That's why I went. impact that the Yes Institute is having on the community is that they're educating the public about gender and orientation and they're doing it in a way that's not confrontational. They're doing it in a way that's creating a safe space for everybody to feel included in the conversation as well as just creating that safe space for people to come and share their own experiences without any judgment. The impact 
impact that Yes Institute has in the community I think is, is comprehensive. They um, provide education to both larger systems, schools and universities, uh, corporations and businesses, as well as individuals and families, so that it hits the entire community. Oh, that's great. So Joseph, um, you're here with us. We'd love to hear more about the great work that you're doing. Yes. Um, hello, everyone. Yeah, could you actually, we'd love to see you. There you go. We yes, I was, I was clicking the button. It's, so um, thank you for having us. And on the theme of tonight, I want to say, Oi, tudo bem? E você? Um, I lived in uh, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil for a little bit in my teenage years. Um, so I love that this film takes place there and is bringing light experiences um, uh, from a Brazilian context. And um, I, I'm just really thrilled to be part of this conversation. And of course, if anybody needs support in the community, we're up and running. COVID's not stopping us. We've, uh, all of our services are available virtually right now. Um, and, it, and we are able to provide services in English, Spanish, and Brazilian Portuguese. So um, thank you for having us tonight. Great, thank you for being here. All right, and next uh, we have another, our last meeting partner, but certainly not least, Safe School South Florida, and we have Scott Galvin, uh, the Executive Director and North Miami Councilman here with us to speak about Safe Schools. Uh, safer Schools uh, uh, helps to create a space for all students regardless of real or perceived sexual orientation, gender identity, and gender expression. Um, and for them and for their parents and guardians. So I think we have a, a video for safe schools as well. Hey everyone, my name is Eddie and I'm a volunteer for Safe Schools South Florida. Safe Schools has been working since 1991 to create safer schools where all students can learn and succeed regardless of sexual orientation, gender identity, or gender expression of their own or that of their parents or guardians. I'm a gay man and my pronouns are he, him, his. Growing up in Miami, I can relate to the challenges we've all experienced. Sometimes it's been our friends at school who aren't really accepting of our sexual identity or expression. Other times it could even be our own family who have trouble getting to accept us. I understand and I'm here for you during this time of COVID-19 to help talk about the things that concern you. Starting today, Safe Schools is going to launch a series of fun and engaging online programs. Since we can't meet in person, we can get together online for this. Some of the topics include virtual GSA, which would be an open session where we can talk about matters that are important to our community. We'll also have online book club, where we can discuss our favorite books. And I'm also super excited to talk about exercise and ways that you can practice it at home during quarantine. We could also have a movie night, but for this, you'll need to create a Netflix account. I would love to use this platform to chat with other youth groups and stay in contact with you guys, wherever you guys are watching from. But that's not all. We'll also have interviews with some of our local South Florida celebrities, and you'll be able to ask them questions about LGBTQ plus issues. Some of you may have never heard of Safe School South Florida before, but we've been in school classrooms for almost 30 years now. We are an active resource for school district staff coordinating LGBTQ programs and services. We have trained over 20,000 educators throughout South Florida who have directly and positively impacted the lives of an estimated 3 million students. Our work and programs have been recognized nationally by the American Federation of Teachers and statewide by the Florida Governor's Commission on Best Practices for Youth Suicide Prevention. Now, let's hear from members of our board of directors, as well as our executive director. Hi everybody, this is Scott. I'm the new executive director of Safe Schools South Florida. You know, COVID set in before I had a chance to meet any of you because I just joined in January. But I wanna make sure that while we're apart, we at Safe Schools are still able to provide you information that leads you to a safe place and a feeling of comfort. So I hope you'll enjoy our programming. Sometimes it'll be live, sometimes it'll be recorded. Sometimes it'll be fun, sometimes it'll be educational. But nonetheless, 
whatever it is that you're tuning in to see. We hope that it helps make you feel safe. I look forward to meeting all of you very soon. So thank you for tuning in to our very first Safe School South Florida broadcast. Give us a like and follow us on all our channels so you can hear about when we plan to meet next. You can find us on Facebook if you look up Safe School South FL, on Instagram at Safe School South Florida, and on Twitter at schools underscore south. Thanks again for watching our Safe School South Florida program. I hope to get to know all of you soon and stay safe and strong during this quarantine. See ya. Scott, we're so happy to have you with us tonight. Well, go Scott. ahead and introduce yourself, Scott. Sorry, I thought <laughs> um, I was just saying it's my pleasure to be here. The uh, movie Valentina was really powerful. And for me, as the executive direct director of Safe Schools, it really struck home because that's the kind of uh, warm and welcoming environment we hope to create for the students who participate in our programs. Um, everybody should be their genuine self and be able to be loved for just who they are. So this Outshine Film Festival has been amazing. Thank you for letting us be a community partner. And uh, to everybody who had a part in making Valentina come to life on the big screen, great job. Thank you, Scott. That's a great segue. Absolutely. It just shows how important uh, film and representation is to the real work that we're doing in our communities and our great partners are doing. So, Dino, with that being said, please uh, go ahead and introduce our guest for this evening. Sure. Um, I just uh, wanted to uh, send a wonderful welcome to the cast and crew and uh, the technical team of our film, um, Valentina. So in attendance, we have uh, Casio Santos, the writer, director of the film. We also have Erica Santos, producer, casting director. We have uh, Natalia Brandino and Ebe uh, Tavashnik are both executive producers of the film. Uh, we have um, um, Francisco Kressmeyer, sound director. Uh, we have San, the composer. And then we have the wonderful acting uh, group uh, um, in the film. Um, Leticia Franco, uh, who plays Amanda. Guta Stresser, the, uh, Valentina's mother. Uh, Pedro Diniz, uh, Pablo Tomas, Ronaldo, Ronaldo, uh, both actors. And uh, unfortunately, Tiesa Weinbach, uh, Valentina couldn't be with us tonight, but uh, it's, uh, it's wonderful to have you all here. So um, it's, uh, it's, it's been a wonderful film and I just wanna make sure that uh, we all get a, a chance to speak with you. So uh, I think they can all turn their cameras on, right? So now, so, right, okay, wonderful. Sure. I can see you all. So yes, uh, thank you for being all here. Uh, Muito obrigado, everybody, for being here. Uh, wonderful film. Uh, this is a, a, um, the, the transgender uh, centerpiece for our festival. So we want to make sure that uh, we give it the, the importance. And uh, your film uh, is fantastic for, for this uh, spotlight because it, it touches on many issues related to the, the trans community. And it's so topical for the times that we're living right now. And uh, I just wanted to, to start with that. And Casio, just I wanted to ask you, um, what was the inspiration for your film? Uh, this is a, a film that you know, is very timely. So can you tell us mm. about what inspired you to, to write this film? Sure, Dino. Uh, first, thank you for having us. It's really nice to be able to, to show the film at Out, Outshine. Uh, well, the idea of this movie uh, started in uh, 2013. Um, myself and Erica, which is my sister and producer, she, Erica is with us. We wanted to, to uh, finally make our first feature film. And the first idea that I wrote, uh, it had to do more with my experience uh, as a gay man. Uh, as a, in fact, it was supposed to be a, a gay character, they also teenagers. Uh, but in the first draft that I wrote, I noticed that uh, that story had been told too many times. Uh, not only the story, but uh, the atmosphere, uh, the kind of narrative. 
I felt that it was a story that had been told so many times. So I decided to try to find another theme, another subject, but within the LGBT community as well. That is the community that I belong. Uh, so I started talking to, to friends, to uh, gay friends, lesbian friends, uh, trans friends, and also reading a lot about, uh, about uh, several topics, uh, articles, uh, newspapers. That was when I came across uh, a statistics that really impressed me that I wasn't aware. Uh, there's this statistic uh, that uh, says that 80% of trans students, they drop out of school in Brazil. And mostly because of bullying from teachers and staff mostly from other students too, too but mostly for, uh, from, uh, from staff and teachers. So uh, I realized that this story uh, wasn't told already, hadn't been told yet. And uh, I started researching more and talking to friends and I showed the material to Erica. And we decided that that was the move that we had to make because it's something that should be discussed. So we started an, a new research. After that, uh, uh, we had Pedro on board, which is uh, a trans man. He's a publicist, but he, he decided to help us as well. We did some research. And also we, after that, we had Sofia on board, which is also a trans woman, and she's a psychologist. And uh, we started interviewing several trans girls about their daily life and issues that they were facing. And after interviewing uh, 50, uh, 50 girls, uh, we, came, we could uh, rewrite the script and trying to find the story that we wanted to tell. So basically, that's how it, it all started. I mean, uh, it wasn't that easy because it took so long for us to raise the money, to raise the funds. It's a low-budget movie that was supported by the Ministry of Culture in 2016. And uh, I mean, it was a long process and I'm sure uh, other, uh, the, the cast and the crew can contribute as well to explain. There are two, uh, two issues particularly that I find uh, very relevant in your film regarding uh, Valentina. And is the fact that not only she is fighting for her recognition at school as Valentina, not as Raul. So, and to, to find out that in Brazil, there are laws that support that, that I'm, I'm, I'm getting from your film, that there are laws that support her right to register at school as Valentina and not as Raul, is that right? Yeah, there's a law, uh, but some schools, they don't respect this law. So every time a trans girl or a trans boy uh, wants to use her real name his, uh, or her social name at school, uh, there's this law, it was created maybe three years ago, that states that uh, the parents, they can uh, help their children to enroll with their social names. Uh, but some schools, they create uh, additional difficulties, even though there is this law. And in fact, the law states that uh, it, it's not necessary to have uh, both parents to, to sign for the, the kid. So only one parent would be enough. But in the case of the film, the principal, uh, she's, uh, she decided that she needed the both uh, uh, signatures to, to, for Valentina to to be enrolled with her social name. And that complicated her life. And it does happen in real life as well. Yeah. Yeah, the other, the other issue that I was uh, thinking of was the cyberbullying and uh, how this is, you know, it's, it's, it's in any high school, any, any school, but particularly even more so when a trans student joined the class. So uh, kudos for, you know, for putting that in the film and how, how relevant to the story the cyberbullying was and how that plays into the story. Uh, I think uh, Valentina, when the film started, Valentina uh, had already dropped out of school. Uh, there's this dialogue in the beginning of the movie that says uh, that the principal asked Valentina, Valentina, why did you stop studying? She doesn't ask on that scene, but I think it's in the, the subtext. And the, the subtext, subtext is that she had been already bullied in her previous school. That, that's why she quit school. So uh, the, I think the, the cyberbullying has to do with the, 
uh, this contemporary world where technology can help you or technology can, uh, in fact, uh, be a place for bullying. Uh, and uh, we decided that, uh, I mean, Valentina, there's a, a scene that Valentina, she tells her friend that uh, she is trans because she decided to tell, she has agency. I think that's important. And her colleagues, uh, some of her colleagues took her, her right to, to tell to whatever, to whomever she wants to make. Because I think that's a decision uh, of the, the person. It's not a secret. If the, somebody wants to be private, it has the right to be private as well. But uh, the cyberbullying was a way to, uh, to switch the narrative. It was kind of a, a plot point to the narrative. And also because it happens in real life, so. Perfect. Ebony, you want to ask a question? Yeah, I was going to say, I know that we also have some of the actors uh, and actresses here with us. So just in terms of, I thought it was interesting um, that you were saying that you did a lot of research and actually um, interviewed a lot of um, trans girls for the, for the storyline and the script. So just for, for the other characters maybe if you could speak to um like Ronaldo if you could speak to what inspiration you brought to the film sure uh I could ask uh, uh you mean uh you you want to to have Ronaldo say some say something about his character yeah maybe some inspiration in playing the character or what that what he what that process was like uh-huh for really? him as an actor to to build the character okay yeah. Uh, Ronaldo, ela quer saber como é que foi uh, para você construir o seu personagem, uh, de onde que você tirou inspiração e como é que você chegou na construção do seu personagem que é o Júlio. É, oi, boa noite a todos. É, então, primeiramente, é, na verdade, eu, eu comecei já de início é, pesquisando um personagem que é o Eric de Sex Education. Só que eu não fui tão a fundo, eu não... Foi tudo muito novo para mim, é, essa onda de cinema. É, por mais que eu já, já, já tinha né, um, uma experiência no teatro, ainda assim é diferente. Então eu acabei me perdendo em relação à produção, à pré-produção dos ensaios e de estudar. Então eu preferi buscar mais uma essência em mim, o que de mim é, tem no Júlio e vice-versa. Então, eu acredito que eu levei para o Júlio um pouco, um pouco ou muito, do Ronaldo. Quando eu li o roteiro pela primeira vez, eu vi que somos muito parecidos. É, então, eu aproveitei isso e, e foi isso. É, mas também não, não houve de eu me perder. E quem é o Ronaldo, quem é o Júlio, eu sabia até onde eu estava levando um pouco de Ronaldo, é, da... da o que o Júlio traz no filme é essa, esse humor. Por mais que o filme seja dramático, o Júlio acaba que, que tem um pouco é, é, mais dessa pegada cômica. E o Ronaldo também tem isso. Então, assim, para ser mais breve, eu acho que eu trouxe é, de mim. O Júlio ele tem muito de Ronaldo e vice-versa. Legal. Uh, he says that at first he had this inspiration from a character uh, from sex education, a character called Eric, and he started to, uh, to study this character at first, but then he realized uh, that it would be better if he could find the character from within. So he noticed that Julio, which is his character, has some lots of stuff related to, to his life as well. And uh, he noticed that Julio has some a kind of humor, a sense of humor, and uh, also other elements that uh, related to, to Ronaldo himself. I, I have to say um, the, the, the stories of the three main characters, not just Valentina, who was wonderful, by the way, Valentina was fantastic, but Julio and Amanda, the, the stories, of the three of them and their interactions and their, their own stories, you know, the teen pregnancy and the, the fact that, you know, Julio is trying to get out and meet the love of his life and he just doesn't want to fall, you know, in the same trap of all the, you know, the, you know, people just being promiscuous, you know, when they come out of the closet is very, is very well, do well done in your film. So 
the fact that they 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 understood each other right away, right off the bat. They were just like, you know, I know who you are, and you know, we accept you. So there was a that, synergy. That was very well done. Yeah. So uh, so and 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 I find it <laughs> tender the story of Julio and uh, and well, in this guy uh, Pablo. So. Um, the 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 love story is just very very well done very cute so and also yes. the same question i think for Le leticia is also in the film maybe it's for her character what was some of the inspiration to prepare okay. leticia é qual que foi a sua inspiração para para sua personagem para amanda hi there i'll try to talk in english but my english is not pretty cool so uh, if I said something wrong, <laughs> you you okay. guys you can wrap it. Um, <laughs> so for my character, when I was young, I watched a, a series. Um, uh, oh my God, I'm so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> was named uh, Gravida aos 16. And Amanda was pregnant, so I remembered that series and took that things for my character. Mm -hmm. um, and Amanda is also a, a nerd, so I googled something about that and and try to to. Um, learn something about this because i'm not uh too much nerd just like comics and pop things you know and like ronaldo i prefer to put my things in my character uh, my i am a bit i am a little bit shy and very anxious so <laughs> uh, Cassio said that it could be cool so I I um, wanted to stay like that you understand what I wanted sure. to say great, great. <laughs> we did perfect yeah, we do obrigado <laughs> so, well, love... uh, go ahead yeah, you know no, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, I, I love kind of what you were saying, Leticia, is just like putting, there was nuance to the story. I felt like the script, like each character. And so just kind of in general for everyone to answer, Cassio, I thought it was interesting that the story was told kind of, it was about transphobia, but it was also kind of connected to just misogyny and the whole the, the story of this boy and this this you know just kind of a in that sense kind of a hetero hetero heteronormative kind of kind of I guess I don't know scene of you know taking advantage of taking advantage of Valentina and I thought that was really interesting to show that intersection so mm -hmm. what what was the inspiration to tell the story that way uh I have some other, sh I have some short films that had uh, girls as protagonists uh, and I was uh, already like uh, researching and experimenting with uh, protagonists uh, as women. And I, I think the misog misogynist part is that uh, if you are a gay boy, you also feel this mis misogyny somehow, even if you, you grow in a, mostly if you grow in a small town, I think you start to notice the misogyny because of homophobia, because I think both things are, are linked. Uh, and uh, as a gay boy, I, I think I, I grew up learning that there's this misogyny in the world and uh, women are treated different as gay are treated different as well. So I decided to, to try this intersection in Valentina. That, that was really, it just made the story so much deeper and, and more real, realistic and interesting. Nice. Yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to touch on the, the, one of the, to me, one of the centers of the story focus on the relationship between Valentina and her mother. 
So uh, that that was that was very strong, very powerful, and and uh, and even the relationship or the lack of relationship with the father. So, but her the center to me is the relationship between Valentina and the love the mom, Gina, and the the how she fight for her in every aspect of it. So since we have a Guta in the in the in the in the call. Guta plays I Valentina. I think she left. I think she had to leave. Uh, oh, she, she. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh -huh. she did. Yes, I think she she left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess. But if you want to talk about the character, we could discuss oh, it, it, it probably. This this is very important how you wrote that uh, the, the 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 relationship between the two of them and how she basically is fighting uh, in all fronts you know the school the the friends the 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 woman that you know rents them the house the police the the father so talk about that please uh yeah in fact uh we I think the, the first thing that comes in, in mind when you're developing an LGBT character and a trans character, and mostly after doing the research and in, interviewing 50 girls about their experience, is that most of these stories, they, uh, they are related to conflicts with parents. And most of the, the trans girls and boys, uh, they are expelled for, from home. Uh, it happens a lot here in Brazil, unfortunately and uh, they don't have the support nor uh, by the father nor by the mother. Sometimes they do, and I think uh, the world is starting to, to change. I think it has to change. But we decided that the, the main conflict of the movie would be outside in society and not within their, their home. So we decided to create these two characters, mother and daughter, with a strong bond so that they could support each other and also uh, I think her mom empowers Valentina for her to fight at school, for example. Mm -hmm. If she hadn't the support from her, her mom, maybe it would be much more difficult to, uh, to be herself at school and to fight for her rights. And uh, we decided to make this strong bond, these strong connections. I think it's important for the narrative and it's important also to, to, start, a conver to start a conversation in society uh, about the importance uh, to have uh, a strong connections, uh, uh, parents and uh, LGBT kids. I think it's important to, to start talking about, about this. And uh, I mean, how important is the, the support that the parents give to the kids? Because if they are supported at, at home, uh, it's going to be less difficult in society. And uh, it's possible to to uh, fight for, for the rights and, uh, and uh, try to make a safe space uh, within the family, within the friends. It's possible to, to build a safe environment as well, although uh, the, the situation is, is difficult for most of the, the trans population. Sure. Well, I know that we also have, uh, we have several of the producers on the call as well. So I'm curious yeah. to hear a little bit more about what goes into making this film? I know you mentioned that it was a low budget film and, and I think you said the government actually provided some grant funding for it. Um, so just in terms of what that process was like kind of putting it together, but also maybe the future of distribution, what you hope for, for the film. Erika and Abby, vocês querem conversar sobre como foi o processo de de financiamento Maybe Erika can talk about the financing, the financing part, and Abby can talk about the, the distribution that she, she's been helping. Okay, Erika, como é que foi para começar a financiar o filme, conseguir a verba e fazer o projeto? Então, é, a gente começou a falar um pouquinho assim do roteiro, né, que foi em 2013. E depois a gente conseguiu uma verba pelo Fundo Setorial do Audiovisual, com a ajuda da Ancine também. E depois disso, a gente já, já começou a fazer a pré-produção. Mas foi uma edital de baixo orçamento, que foram 10 filmes contemplados no Brasil, né, para incentivar novos diretores, longas de, primeiro longa de novos diretores. 
Massa. E foi isso. Uh, she says that uh, we started in, in 2013, uh, developing the script and uh, trying to find opportunities for, for financing. And uh, after some development, the film was financed by, a, received a grant. It was a low budget grant for first time feature filmmakers. It was a grant uh, that was, uh, uh, how do I say that? That was uh, offered by the, the Ministry of Culture by that time, and also unseen, Fundo Setorial do Audiovisual. So it was a low budget grant for, for first feature film directors. And I, I, she said that uh, 10 projects were received the, the support by this grant. So I, I, I'm going to jump in. I um, boarded this amazing project when I was almost um, finished. Um, and I um, absolutely fall in love with uh, Valentina. And then I uh, met um, Cassio and Erica and I fell in love with them. Um, as um, I'm, I'm a filmmaker, but I've been working as a programmer for the last 20 years. And I have um, programmed um, many, uh, many, many films um, uh, with uh, transgender uh, characters at the center. And, um, and I even have the premieres of those films in the United States. Um, and most of the times the stories end up very tragically. And I really felt uh, that, you know, this film brought some light into, you know, a light we, we all need. And, um, and it really, I don't know, it resonated with me. I was, I got really emotional when I, when I saw it the first time. And there was something about the character and it was something about the truth of all the characters that um, are in this film. Um, and I felt like, you know, yes, there is a, a lot of tragedy. And of course the statistics are terrible, but this story was not only timely, but also necessary. And um, so, you know, regarding the plans, we believe, and, and I really, I'm very, you know, quoting almost, to Cassio uh, words when he says, um, you know, when he made this film, he wanted everybody to see it. And I, that's like our idea. And, um, you know, we've been working together since, you know, we, we uh, met and, um, you know, this opportunity that we have an Outfest and we have some more festivals coming up. We are not yet able to talk about them. And, um, you know, we are starting uh, some of the conversations about um, distribution. It's, I really believe this is a kind of film that, you know, should be in schools, should be, you know, shown as much as possible because at the, you know, you see these characters, you know, we were talking about this support, this love that, um, you know, there is in this community. And I think it's possible, I know, you know, if we start portraying these, you know, characters and this, you know, type of communities, you know, people will start, you know, mirroring uh, what they see. Uh, so, you know, in a nutshell, that's kind of, you know, how I got involved, but also, you know, our, um, you know, vision for what we want to do with Valentina. I think, you know, Valentina is uh, also because of Tiesa and the, performance that um, she gave us, um, you know, you just see a, a teenager and you feel for her. And I think that's another, um, you know, achievement of the whole, you know, team that was behind this film, that eventually you can connect with her, we, you know, beyond the fact that, you know, whether she's a trans or not, she's just a teenager and she's, you know, going through all the you know doubts and and she's looking for her father she's having trouble at school she's very intelligent and you know she's taking a little bit as you know the weird one so you know i think that's you know important because we can all connect with her and uh, and we need that this is a time of of the world where we need to see the similarities uh, you know among all of us uh, and this film really really helped us and that respect. Yeah, I think you touch on something very important here. And it's, I, I think this is a film that should be shown at schools. So yeah. it's a, 
is a very important for people for people at that age in high school and middle school to see you know the reality of a trans student and what they go through and their families so and actually that's one of the things that that the Outshine Film Festival is trying to, you know, to accomplish here in, 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 in Day County and in Florida to show, you know, some of these relevant films to gay students, you know, uh, LGBT students in the community. So it's, it, it's, it's, so, it's so timely that you mentioned that. So, and I, if, if I understand correctly in the credits, uh, is Atiesa also a pro, a, associate producer in the film? Is associate that right? Associate producer, yeah. She's also an associate producer. Okay, wonderful. How old is she? She, she's, is she, she looks so young. She, yeah, she looks young. In fact, she's 30. She, she just she's turned 30, my, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. Doesn't she's look one like 30. Not at all, at all. I thought I, I believe she was in high school, so yeah. she's is she's very she's very talented, no doubt. So yeah, uh, yeah. She she was in our Q and A, uh, our uh, YouTube talk uh, a few days ago. So yeah, yeah. So and you, so were you, right? You were there too, so I believe. So yeah. Uh, so was, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. So um, I just I feel like on this topic we have Scott and uh, Joseph on the call too so I just want to kind of throw out an invitation for our community partners if you have any specific questions on this idea of showing films in schools um, you know I just want to open it up that I think you know it'd, it'd be great to speak on this as well but I love what you said about um, um, the character of Valentina like just kind of transcending um, just being, you know, seen as a trans character, but really there's so much humanity and nuance to her story and she's just a regular teen. So I'm still kind of intrigued by all of the research that was done to kind of tell the story. So has this story been shown, has this film been shown back to maybe some of the teenagers you interviewed as a part of the process or to uh, communities in Brazil? In fact, we are just starting the, the film career. Uh, it started the, in August, and we are de also developing uh, an impact distribution plan within Brazil. And uh, one of the, the phases of this plan is to show to, at schools and to show to LGBT institutions and uh, colleges and uh, to show to as many uh, trans people as well. I, I think uh, the intention is, is to make the, the, the film seen, but also discussed as well at schools and for sure we're going to show to to the girls we interviewed uh, it's just that we are starting at this moment but it's in our plan for the following months yeah in talking about that uh, Cassio I mean and, and we we hear about the you know the current situation in Brazil not only for LGBT people, but particularly to transgender people in Brazil and the violence in, in Brazil against the trans community. And uh, particularly under the current administration, under Jair Bolsonaro and what's going on in Brazil with the changes and the conservatism. Can you talk about how this will impact you showing that film in Brazil at schools and if that's gonna be a, a, an issue for you, for you guys? Yeah, I, I think it can be a challenge uh, because after elections, it's not only a question about uh, what the president thinks, but he's there because there are several, several persons in society who thinks like this, that, that's why he, he's there. So uh, I think he symbolizes uh, the prejudice and the, uh, the bigots that exist, exist, uh, existed in society as well. Uh, but at uh, a more uh, institutional level, I think maybe we can have more difficulties to access schools in mostly public schools. Uh, because uh, I think in the United States it's happened as well. There's a, a talk about, uh, in Brazil, it, we call ideologia de gênero, uh, gender mm. ideology. It's something that the conservatives invented and that doesn't exist. In fact, there's the fight against prejudice but uh, some conservatives uh, believe that uh, the, uh, the gender ideology is like to, uh, to influence kids to become gay, to become uh, transgender, to become non-binary. Uh, 
uh, it's like uh, they, they fight this gender e ideology like the way they, they fight co communism. Uh, I think that there's a ghost they think exists, but in fact, uh, I think there's a movement to fight uh, prejudice and uh, Valentina is part of, is part of this movement. Uh, maybe we can have, with this new administration, we can have more difficulties and challenge, challenges to, to get to schools but we are trying to, to figure out a way to, to show to teachers and to, to show to students as well. Yeah, okay, wonderful. Uh, before we, we wrap this up, can you tell us uh, what's next for you and for, for the movie? Where, where, where are your plans for the film? What, what's your next project? Can you tell us about that? Uh, yeah, I have an, another project. I'm starting to write a new feature film. Uh, it's also LGBT theme, uh, but more adult driven in the sense that it's the story of, of uh, a man in his uh, mid 50s. And uh, we are just starting to develop. And uh, maybe I couldn't talk a, a lot about this project because it's really in early development. <laughs> but there's this project that we are starting. And also, we have the plan to distribute uh, Valentina within Brazil and also uh, at film festivals abroad. And we are trying to find distributors and uh, partners to help us to show the film to as many persons as we can. And I, that's, uh, I think we have a, another year, maybe two years ahead to, to make this movie seen to by, by many people. Uh, if I could suggest uh, the composers from the, the, the final music, and most of the songs, they are here with us. Uh, they are from uh, a really uh, cool band called Tuyu. And uh, it's re really special to have them. I was, looking for, I was looking for them, but I couldn't find yeah, them. Yeah, the Lai, uh, Liu, oh, and I Machado, <laughs> they are here. Okay. And, uh, uh, together with Sean, uh, Sean is a trans artist they composed the, the final song from Valentina, for, for Valentina. Awesome. A very, very uh, good song, it's a great song. And uh, I mean, it's great to have them here and maybe they could talk a little bit about the music because they re were really generous with the, the movie. Oh. Uh, maybe Leo? Yeah. <laughs> Oi, turma. Hi, people. Oi. Good night. Um, <laughs> Sean, she's fighting with the internet in oh. her house. So we hope she get her she get here soon, but I don't know. Um I think I will talk in Portuguese because the audience in live is on fire and oh. I think they are Mostly no Brazilians. So, oh. fala garotada, boa noite. Oi. Boa noite. Que coisa mais boa vocês com a gente. É. Para nós foi uma uma um carinho muito grande receber o convite. Acredito que muito por conta do, das temáticas que já passam pelo discurso da banda. É, o Brasil é um país bastante resistente. Na, nas dissoluções de poder, nas dinâmicas de poder, em qualquer é, categoria, qualquer que seja é, a intersecção social. Então, a gente é uma banda negra que tem muitas amizades com muitos artistas é, que simbolizam, que significam esse rompimento com o modelo flat de ser brasileiro, ou, 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 os caminhos mais conservadores. E eu sinto que Valentina é uma obra talvez o, o timing, eu estava ouvindo a Érica, a Hebe, o Cássio falarem sobre o processo do filme e eu, eu não tinha conhecimento de que era um processo tão longo, de tanto tempo e achei muito interessante que ele tenha culminado na sua feitura completa justamente agora. É... A Xan não está aqui para dizer Mas quando a gente escreveu a música A gente escreveu já tendo visto o filme 
já tendo assistido, a gente teve esse privilégio de assistir antes aqui no Brasil, ainda não foi lançado. E foi a Xante acabado de tinha vivido o processo de transição e de anunciar para a gente o que estava acontecendo na vida dela, porque nós nos conhecemos há 12 anos, nós e a Xan. E o processo de transição dela é relativamente recente. O processo de, de comunicação da transição dela é relativamente recente. E foi muito oportuno que ela tivesse é, a chance de poder transformar essa transição numa obra tão simbólica que culminasse com o filme. Então, para nós, é, o timing das coisas que foram acontecendo nas nossas vidas pessoais, no nosso relacionamento como amigas, é, o timing das coisas que tinha acontecido ao nosso redor, política e socialmente no país, e o que Valentina simboliza parece, parece coisa de filme. <risos> e a gente agradece demais o, o, o convite da turma toda, a gente é muito fã da Tia Cita, Ronaldo, Pablo, Lê, tô contente demais de estar aqui com vocês, e acho que falo por todos, Jean e Lala, vocês estão aí? Obrigado, Liliana, obrigado a você, I don't know, Cassio, you. If you, I don't know if you want to translate, but at least uh, a summary of what she said, because for our sure. English, so. Sure, uh, she said that, uh, They are a band, uh, they, they, start, they are uh, Afro-Brazilian band, and they had this partner, partnership with uh, Sean for uh, over uh, 20 years. And she thinks it's a really timely movie because she didn't know that we started uh, seven years ago. And the film is being ready, it's being finished at this particular moment uh, that Brazil have this conservative government and uh, maybe uh, chances of losing rights and everything related uh, to the, the topic. And she has, uh, the band has several partnerships with uh, independent artists. And uh, she was talking about uh, Sean as well, because uh, Sean's trans uh, transition uh, was a, a little bit of a coincidence with the, the, uh, the movie coming out, the movie uh, being finished. Uh, we invited them and they invited Sean and they made this beautiful music together. And uh, it was a very timely moment uh, to, so that Sean could also talk about herself and put herself in, in this music. I also, like, I also like the song at the, at the disco, at the party, at the... the they have a at... song at the party as well. They have several songs in the movies too. Yeah. Very they good. Like, We are uh, all over uh, it. Six, seven <laughs> songs in Valentina. Muito, muito, muito bom. Obrigado. You're saying the, um, you said the, the, the chat is blowing up. Is it, so it's your, your fans and that are tuning in? Yeah. yeah. Our friends, our fans. I think our friends. <laughs> they, they are bigger and bigger. And yeah. also, it's really great music, high quality oh. music. And we also have, have a lot of a lot of Brazilians here in South Florida that are probably tuning in. So yeah, and yeah. so they should so check it, out to you and Sean. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so good to have you. That's awesome. Thank you. Cassio. Oi. E como foram generosos com a gente, né? Yes, oh. they were really generous with the, the movie and the project. Muito obrigado. Thank you guys. You are generous with us too. <laughs> so I know we have uh, we're, we have to wrap up here, but definitely again, just going back to the theme of this of this film and and reaching young people and representation. I wanted to give the last question to Ronaldo and Pablo, uh, Leticia, maybe just for your for your characters. Like, what would be advice you would give to young um, our young trans and LGBT audience? É, Ronaldo, uh, Pablo, eu acho que o Pablo não falou também, de repente o Pablo pode falar. Sim. E também a pergunta para vocês e para a Letícia. É, qual o conselho que vocês dariam para o público uh, que é trans e é LGBT, o público jovem, o público teen, depois de fazer esse filme? 
Bom, dá, tá me ouvindo? Sim. Ah. Yeah, sim. Ok. É, eu falaria que é, é muito difícil passar por todo o processo de aceitação, tanto interna e depois passar por um processo de contar para as pessoas, mas é um processo que a gente tem que passar, que acho que todo mundo que é LGBT vai passar um dia, e que por mais que a gente passe por alguns momentos que são realmente muito difíceis, é um pouco clichê, mas realmente acaba passando, sabe? Acaba passando, e aí a gente... Eu gosto muito de uma frase da RuPaul, né? Que ela fala assim, que nós, enquanto LGBT, é, comunidade LGBT, nós podemos escolher a nossa família. Então, de repente, se a sua família não te aceita, né? Você acaba conhecendo outras pessoas que eventualmente vão te aceitar, enfim, você acaba achando a sua tribo, a sua comunidade, né? Caso a sua família não te aceite. O que não é o caso da Valentina, mas é o caso de é a realidade de muitos. Então, basicamente isso, se apoiar nas pessoas que realmente te apoiam e te amam. Awesome. Uh, he said that uh, for LGBT uh, persons, LGBT teens, it's uh, several challenges. The first one is uh, the challenge within yourself. You have to accept yourself. After this challenge, uh, you have to come out to society, which is a challenge as well. But uh, you can find allies, allies you can uh, find friends. Uh, he said about a, a a phrase, uh, a sentence from RuPaul, uh, if your family doesn't accept you, you can find another family. You can, and that, that's what, what he said. And you can be embraced, uh, you, you're not alone. Wonderful. Awesome, yeah, so um, I'm, I'm actually impressed that he's quoting RuPaul <laughs> for our yeah. ending. It's good. <laughs> uh, Ronaldo and Pablo, they are boyfriends in real life. Yeah, I figure that. We can... Yeah. We can... <laughs> eles we have... eles we dividem have... o fone. Eles we dividem have... um fone. Sim, yeah. A gente divide tudo, galera. Tudo, tudo. Happy for both of them. So... <laughs> <laughs> so... Um... I don't know if anybody else wants to say anything, but we really, really want to uh, thank you all for uh, participating in this wonderful Q&A. Uh, your film has been very uh, meaningful, has been very relevant, have been stunning for our festival and to be the centerpiece. And uh, I want to be, you know, very appreciative and tell you that uh, we are very glad that you show your film here. So uh, we wish you wonderful success with the film and uh, I hope you keep us in mind for your future projects. So uh, sure, let sure. us know, okay? And I wanna thank you for the invitation and for the opportunity to show the film to, to Florida audience and also to be here with you sharing experiences. Uh, and I quero agradecer o elenco. I like, would like to thank the, the cast and the team that are supporting us, are supporting Valentina as well. And thank you all, guys. Thank you Muito so obrigado. For... Muito obrigado. Muito obrigado. Muito obrigado. Obrigado, gente. Obrigado. Thank you. Obrigado, thank gente. you. Obrigado, Evelyn. Thank you, Evelyn. Okay, we're going to do photo. Thank um you, photo. Everybody. Um photo. Uh, um photo. Okay. Okay. So let's go. All right. So everybody, hearts. Put your hearts up. Corazones. Corazones. Camera. Your heart. Tuts, 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 tuts. Hey, uno, dos, tres. Okay, un más, un más. Uno, uno más. Dos, tres. All right, y otro foto de seri, 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 seri. All right, smiles and laughs, ready, and one, two, three, one more. One, two, three. Okay. Obrigado, obrigado. Obrigado. Obrigado a você. Thank you. Kisses, Thank you, kisses, our time. Kisses. Thank you for hosting us. Okay. Let's roll the trailer one last time for those who can still see the film for another three days. Okay. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Back so. Valentine. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.